2,000 years ago, the Roman philosopher statesman Seneca once said, "It's not because things are difficult that we do not dare; it's because we do not dare that made things difficult." And 2,000 years after, there is an individual who seemed to be afraid of anything, and his name is Elon Musk. He dreams of building rockets, to sending payloads to space, and eventually humans to colonize Mars. And in the last video, we dive deep into the reasons and his motivation on why that's important. And today, we're learning about the challenges he faced when he's founding SpaceX. And trust me, it's not easy at all. But more importantly, we're going to learn about the principles that he used when it comes to building the rockets in the most cost-efficient way, which I think is going to be important to you because I believe you can take and learn. Most importantly, implement these principles when it comes to running your own companies and startups. So let's begin. Steve Jobs once said. No one wants to die. Even people who want to go to heaven don't want to die to get there. And yet, death is the destination we all share. No one has ever escaped it, and that's as it should be, because death is very likely the single best invention of life. It's life's change agent. It clears out the old to make way for the new. Remember that I will be dead soon. Is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life, because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what's truly important. And why do I mention this quote on death? It's because in the midst of Elon. Thinking and founding SpaceX, he confronted death. Not his own, but probably worse, because his firstborn son had passed, and baby Nevada was only ten weeks old at the time. Elon Musk and his wife at the time, they were at a hotel and attending some event, and their baby in the hotel room just stopped breathing. The cause was probably sudden infant death syndrome, and the book described vividly, and it's really hard to read. To be honest, I said, Elon sobbed uncontrollably. He cried like a wolf. Cried like a wolf. His mother says, and it was three weeks before Elon could bear to go home and see what had once been his son's room. Can we imagine that? It's so tough. But here's what difficult situation could make him or her realize was truly important for this person, and really, really going for it, just like Steve Jobs has said. And we are going to start the chapter founding SpaceX with a very important lesson for founders right away. Elon said, "If you are unwilling to invest in a company, you shouldn't qualify as a founder. You cannot ask for two years of salary in escrow and consider yourself a co-founder. There's got to be some combination of inspiration, perspiration, and risk to be a co-founder." And while he's considering the design and engineering of the rockets, he really used this concept to the max, which is called feedback loop. Right, so he put the design, engineering, and the manufacturing teams all together. And why he does that? He said the people on the assembly line should be able to immediately call a designer or engineer and said, "Why the fuck did you make it this way?" Because for a lot of car manufacturers, especially, that their design team, engineering team, and manufacturing team could be on a totally different part of the planet. But when he put all of them together. Which means that the feedback loop, if there's something very hard to make or it doesn't follow the law of physics, they can just walk down the aisle and tell them, "Hey, you're doing something wrong. Let's make this better." And when it comes to life in general, and especially business, time is money, right? And especially when it comes to building rockets, right? It will take years. It will take millions of dollars to even make an engine, which leads to what we're talking about right here. 
the culture. One of his employees said, "If you are negative or thought something couldn't be done, you are not invited to the next meeting." He just wanted people who would make things happen. It was a good way to drive people to do what they thought was impossible, but it was also a good way to become surrounded by people afraid to give you bad news. And Musk really uses four important principles to the max, and you can really use these principles or thinking process. In your company, whether you're building software, you are making clothes, you are building computers, right? Because the way he approach business and production is really innovative, right? So, question every cost. Elon was laser focused on keeping down costs. It was not simply because his own money was on the line, though that was a factor. It was also because cost effectiveness was critical for his ultimate goal, which was to colonize Mars. He challenged the prices that aerospace suppliers charge for components, which were usually ten times higher than similar parts in the auto industry. And you can really see his reasoning here in this clip. So let's say you're trying to figure out is、um, like why is this this、uh, part or product expensive? Is it、um, because of something fundamentally foolish that we're doing, or is it because our volume is too low? And so then you say, okay, well, what if our volume was a million units a year? Is it still expensive? That's what I mean by thinking about things in the limit. If it's still expensive at a million units a year, then volume is not the reason why your thing is expensive. There's something fundamental about the design. And with that thinking, after a few years, SpaceX was making in-house seventy percent of the components of its rockets. Number two, question all specifications, and this became his mantra when it comes to developing products, whether it's at Tesla or SpaceX. So whenever one of his engineers cited a requirement as a reason for doing something, Elon would grill them. Who made that requirement? And answering military or the legal department was not good enough. He would reply, "Who wrote that? Why does it make sense? All requirements should be treated as recommendations." He repeatedly instructed. Only immutable ones were those decreed by the laws of physics. And Steve Jobs actually had extremely similar opinion. An approach when it comes to building his products, which you can see from this clip. When you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way it is, and your your life is just to live your life inside the world. Try not to bash into the walls too much. Uh, uh, try to have a nice family life,、uh, have fun, save a little money.、Um, but life. That's a very limited life. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact, and that is everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. And you can change it. You can influence it. You can you can build your own things that other people can use. And the minute that you understand that you can poke life and actually something will you know if you push in something will pop out the other side that you can you can change it you can mold it. Um, that's maybe the most important thing. Principle number three: have a maniacal sense of urgency. When one of his engineer was working on the Merlin engines, he presented an aggressive schedule for completing one of the versions. It wasn't aggressive enough for Musk, so he asked, "How the fuck can it take so long? This is stupid. Cutting in half." And his engineer balked. "You can't just take a schedule that we already cut in half and then cut in half again." He said, "Must look at him coldly and told him to stay behind after the meeting. When they were alone, he asked Mueller whether he wanted to remain in charge of the engines, and Mueller said he did." Must replied, "Then when I ask for something, you fucking give it to me." Mueller agreed and cut the schedule in half. And guess what? He says we ended up developing it in about the time that we had put in that original schedule. Sometimes Elon's insane schedules produced the impossible. Sometimes they didn't. I learned never to tell him no. Mueller says, "Just say you are going to try. Then later explain why if it doesn't work out." A maniacal sense of urgency is our operating principle. He repeatedly declared, "The sense of urgency was good for its own sake. It made his engineers engage in first principles thinking." But as Mueller points out, it could be also destructive. Steve Jobs did something similar. His colleague called it his reality distortion field. 
he set unrealistic deadline. And when people balked, he would stare at them without blinking and said, "Don't be afraid. You can do it." Although the practice demoralized people, they ended up accomplishing things that other companies couldn't. And their interviews, people actually said that they really did the best work of their entire life when they were working with Steve Jobs. So, which is something really for us to reflect upon when it comes to running your company. There are times to push the impossible. And I believe that each of us will have our own resistance and limitations because of something has never been done before. It doesn't necessarily mean that is not going to be possible, right? And a lot of time, when there's a visionary or a leader to really push you to the max, although your ego or your mind will protest. However, if you're really looking at a company to produce value through Products and services. Maybe the sacrifice that you have made, the demoralization, might have meant something. But of course, it's up to you as a leader or as an employee to see how far you want to go to achieve the vision. So, principle number four: move fast, blow things up. Elon told us to build one engine and fire it up on the test stand. If it worked, put it on a rocket and fly it. Because SpaceX was a private company, and because Musk was willing to ignore the rules, it could take the risks it wanted. And Elon believes that every situation is salvageable. That taught us a lot, and it actually was fun. So there's a story when it comes to the thrust chamber. When the chambers arrived at a factory, Musk was dressed in fine leather boots for a Christmas party he was planning to attend, and he never got to the party. He spent All night helping to apply the glue and ruining his boots, the gamble failed. As soon as pressure was applied, the glue came unstuck. The chambers had to redesign, and the schedule for launch slipped four months. But Musk's willingness to work all night at a factory pursuing the innovative idea inspired his engineers not to be afraid of trying offbeat fixes. So, leadership principle: as we wrap up this video, there are distractions. Wearing fine leather boots, of going to a Christmas party, but he knew clearly within every single ounce of his soul and his being that the sense of mission is much more important because he need to work on this, try to solve the thrust chamber problem, so they can have a usable engine, so that they can have a rocket, so that they can try out this rocket and sending payload, and then eventually sending human to colonize Mars. And for him, that there's nothing. Else, in that moment, that's more important than fixing and solving that problem, so that he can get one step closer towards his mission. And someone that is so devoted towards his or her mission is inevitable that other people will find that inspiring. And I really believe that every single one of us could be very devoted to each of our own mission. Only you know that what is your mission in this life. And even if you don't, in that moment, keep trying some things out, and I believe you can find it. So there you have it, chapter sixteen to eighteen from the biography of Elon Musk. Thank you so much for watching the biography series of Elon Musk. New video coming to you every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Till next time.